So it is April 4, 2018. And uh, the black world is in mourning right now because we are now mourning the passing of the mother of the apartheid resistance, Miss Winnie Mandela, passed away two days ago. And, um, you know, we are mourning, we are standing up with South Africa at this moment as we, you know, honor the life of this great African queen, warrior princess, who did so much to help tear down the walls of racism on the African continent. Still there, but... The promised land is nearer with the efforts of people like Winnie Mandela. As a little youth growing up in the 80s, and we usually watch international news highlights and anything to do with international news on JBC TV them time there. And anything to do with South Africa. The lady that was always at the forefront of the struggle is Miss Winnie Mandela. She got through a lot. Yeah, man. While her husband, her former husband, Nelson Mandela, was locked away for 27 years. She bore the brunt of the struggle in South Africa. She got through a lot. Torture, imprisonment, abuse, Exile, forced exile, living in some squalor conditions as he brought up the two daughters that was produced by she and Nelson Mandela. And, uh, you know, I can always remember Miss Winnie Mandela at the forefront of the struggle in South Africa, the land where the white man came and destroyed the dignity of the black people down on the Cape of Africa, known as South Africa. They denationalized millions of black people, stole the land, destroy the dignity of a people and on top of that when the struggle intensified they imposed the system of apartheid in 1948 a wretched system that segregated people in their own land and it was countries like Jamaica that led that initiated the fight against apartheid in the 1950s when the struggle was on in earnest in South Africa and the apartheid system reigned from 1948 until 1991 which there's still remnants of that system in South Africa as we speak. But Winnie Mandela, the person, the mother of South Africa, the mother of the nation, and we're not here to talk about anything else. But of course, we'll be having some features tonight on the great Winnie Mandela. Yeah? So, when we come back, we continue the discussion and the honoring of the late, great mother of the nation, Winnie Mandela. The great Peter Tosh, yeah, fighting against apartheid. And when I hear these songs, it bring back so much memories as a youth in high school when we were um, in the height of the struggle them time there, back in the 80s. And as I say, we are, you know, honoring the life tonight here on the cutting edge 
of the great Winnie Mandela who passed away two days ago. And uh, we were speaking that this was the lady who was at the forefront of the black African struggle in the late 80s while her husband was being incarcerated in prison for 27 years fighting for a just cause, fighting for a cause to restore their dignity, fighting for the land that was stolen away from them, fighting against segregation, fighting against oppression, that wicked apartheid system that annihilated a dignity of a people, the dignity of a people in South Africa. And, uh, you know, there are so much things that happened to Africa. We trace back to 300 years when the white man came there. And, of course, culminated with the scramble of Africa where the European countries carve out Africa at the Berlin Conference in 1885. So you find the countries like France, Germany, um, Portugal, England, Spain, all of them met Belgium, little, little Belgium, got the biggest piece of Africa, little, little Belgium in the central Africa area of the Congo, totally wiping away the dignity of the black man. And here we are today fighting the struggle same way as it intensifies in a more modern kind of way. And with the passing of Winnie Mandela, we know it's the closing of a chapter and the beginning of a new era. Winnie Mandela, born in Bizana on the Eastern Cape, 1936, in South Africa, embarked on a career of social work which led to her involvement in activism. Of course, we know the famous marriage she had, marrying the ANC leader then, Nelson Mandela, in 1958. And he was in prison for much of their four decades of marriage. She became the president of the ANC Women's League in 1993. The following year, she was elected to parliament and we can talk about some of her accomplishments and we can talk about also some of what tainted her but the fact remains is that at the end of the day Winnie Mandela stood proud and tall for the black man and the black woman of the African race the African diaspora those living on the continent and those living off it and we honor her life and we don't visit when nobody wants to say, Winnie Mandela is our mother of the nation. All right, we're going to take another break because, you know, we have so much things to get through. We have some features coming up. And we're going to get them out of the way. Of course, we're going to open the lines as well for people to, you know, send them tributes, you know, and send them honor to the great lady. So let us get some stuff out of the way. And then we'll get right into the meat of the matter when we come back. All right, cutting edge here on IRFM. <laughs> you know, easy, you know. <laughs> she should have speed for come back for come to her to the officer. <laughs> All right, the cutting edge here on IRFM. Roger Haspel here holding the fourth for the General Mutabaruka. Yeah, cutting edge. The original black conscious African centered program here. An area FM in Jamaica. Yeah, you know. Also, we are lieutenants of Pan Africanism. So, it's always an honor and a pleasure to sit in on this program. Of course, um, today is a, is, is, a, is, a, is a day also where we look back 50 years ago today when the late Martin Luther King Jr. was gone down in Memphis, Tennessee. He was born on January 15, 1929, and on the evening of April 4, 1968, while standing on the balcony of his motel room in Memphis, Tennessee, where he was to lead a protest march in sympathy with striking garbage workers of that city, 
he was assassinated. Of course, we're going to play a little later on, or, you know, a little later on, the fine, his last speech. He's like, see the man, see what was coming. His last, very last speech. Yeah, when he went to the mountaintop. And of course, today is also the birthday of acclaimed American poet, storyteller, activist, and autobiographer, Maya Angelou, born Margaret Johnson in St. Louis, Missouri, April 4, 1928. This great lady had a career as a singer, dancer, actress, composer, Hollywood's first female black director, but most famous as a writer, editor, essayist, playwright, and poet. Yeah, I know her in the poet field. And as a civil rights activist, Angelo worked for Dr. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. And some of her great poems include Phenomenal Woman, Still I Rise, Caged Bird, Alone, Touched by an Angel, Woman Work. Men! She'd have been 90 years old today if she was living, but her spirit lives on. Yeah. All right, so we continue to celebrate the life of the late Winnie Mandela. And right now we're going to go to her very, very last public speech, last public appearance, late last month. And of course, she was admitted to hospital last week and uh, she never make it out. Gone join the ancestors. I are calling. But this is also her last public appearance. Welcome to the Great African Leadership Series, where we feature great inspirational speeches and quotes from African leaders. We will sleep peacefully when we leave this world, because we know we have left a custodians of the struggle. And the wonderful speeches we have heard here, I'm so proud of the vice SRC president. How's up, I'm done. You know what it means to have young women like this on an occasion of this nature. You have no idea what it means uh, to our generation. That day, Yabo Mamulili and Goyi. Those 60 years ago, when they collected women from all over the country, women who were walking barefoot, women who came from the countryside with their babies on their backs, and it was those years when apartheid was at its west. South Africa was a police state. Even Nazi Germany did not compare to what we went through those many years ago. And that today we have young girls like this, Roma Mutandi, the wonderful species we have heard here. No, no, I'm so open and frank. This was the idea of this forum. About what you are doing, Tina, which generation you to, we will sleep peacefully when we leave this world because we know we have left the custodians of the struggle for women in your hands. Congratulations. You know, those many years ago when we fought for the liberation of this country, no problem was uh, insurmountable. Sasasilwa for the liberation of our country. And the struggle those days was our opium. We were so hooked by our thirst for freedom that we did not foresee that in 2016 I would hear a, a young girl 
saying she has attempted suicide <coughs> many times. It is an indictment to us, to all of us sitting here as mothers, grandmothers and their sisters and aunts to you. In the only hands on, what have we done to our country? What have we not done that has led us up to this situation in which we find ourselves? Nansanje, um, the DA is able to get a message from us. Yeah. And you, women, are in the majority. Yeah. What have we done to South Africa? All of us need to introspect and find out what have we done to these children? What now? I'm oh, sorry, this is my nurse uh, from the military. She says I need to take a sip of water. My, my five-year-old, her daughter, came uh, from school and said, you know, you know, you know, Coco, uh, oh, oh, Ramos, there's like a little boy I like in school. His name is Ramos. But, uh, uh, this is a non racial crush. Uh, but Ramos said uh, he likes my pretty face, but uh, he didn't like my kinky hair. Five year old. And this boy is of her age. And then we are surprised when there are sparrows of today calling us monkeys. And we think it's a joke and it doesn't affect you. It affects only that person who was called a monkey. It insults all of us. These people must not tempt us again. These people who are of the other color must not go back to that racism which drove us to the forest. We are still there. We are still alive. And it's nice Susan I mean. yeah. <laughs> It is about time the women of this country gave a strong warning to all those races up there out there who keep come calling us monkeys, who keep calling us baboons, that they must remember. They must remember what we have done to them in the past. There were times when we were all by ourselves in the country. And yet we defeated them. We defeated apartheid. We fought them. And uh, they knew that uh, they could no longer win any battle on racism. So they must not keep reminding us of those days because uh, our people are still there. Do not continue provoking us. You do not play with that fire as long as we breathe. Amanda! Yes, man. One of the great tributes to Winnie Mandela done by our very own Carleen Davis. This was a hit as well. I remember this song so clearly. It was such an anthem back then. And, you know, when Winnie Mandela came here in 1991 with her husband, then Mr. Nelson Mandela, when, when they visited um, Jamaica, um, they spoke eloquently, they spoke positively, and they spoke stridently about the role that Jamaica and Jamaican musicians in particular played in keeping them to ensure that they fight in the struggle. The liberation songs, the songs from the Burning Spears and the Peter Tushes and the Bob Marleys of this world and all the black consciousness that emanated out of Jamaica back then, headed by Rastafari, you know, and we know of the large Rastafari community in South Africa and the large Garveyite community in South Africa, all of which 
emanated out of Jamaica and the role and and they, they really paid homage to the role that Jamaican musicians played and uh, you know continue to play in this time of struggle all right so we're gonna go to a feature now you know on the cutting edge here of course Roger Hasfield here holding the Ford for motor and um, it's a two-part uh, feature and uh, it's gonna look delve deep into the life of uh, Winnie Mandela so we're gonna start with part one no. Winnie Mandela, freedom fighter and ex-wife of late former South African President Nelson Mandela. Loved by many for her struggle to free her husband and free the country. On the flip side, disputed because of complicity for murder. Now, more than two decades after her husband's release in 1990, she seems to be forgiven but not forgotten. Winnie Mandela, 1997, in front of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the TRC, in South Africa. The TRC was set up in 1996 to investigate wrongdoings during apartheid and to promote an atmosphere of reconciliation. Winnie Mandela is to be heard about her role in the violence that raged through the Soweto Township in Johannesburg in the 1980s. I am saying it is true. Things went horribly wrong. I fully agree with that. And for that part of those painful years when things went horribly wrong and we were aware of the fact that there were factors that led to that, for that I am deeply sorry. The main issue during Winnie's hearings was the murder of 14-year-old Stompy Zepe in 1988. The forced and hardly straightforward apology of the former wife of peace icon Nelson Mandela left the nation in shock. Also, it confronted people with the question of who Winnie really was and where she came from. <laughs> Africa, Malupagani so Winnie Mandela was born on the 26th of September 1936 in Umbongweni in the province now known as Eastern Cape. She was born in this compound that is still owned by the family. Winnie's cousin, Mheli Madikizela, says that people here are usually shy of outsiders with cameras, but he was willing to speak about his cousin. Mheli says Winnie often comes here. Yes, she visits her home. How can someone forget where she comes from? For now, she's the eldest in the family. So everything that doesn't go well... We give her a ring and arrange for her to come down. So, uh, you see now, as you can see, that the fields are about to be right. She'll come down for millies. We stay with her here. Maheli knows a totally different Winnie to the one who appeared before the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. She's a good person, a good, caring person, uh, someone who understands his family, someone who is helpful to the family, someone who doesn't uh, take things. I mean, if something is wrong, it won't be right. Not far away is the site of where Winnie went to school, just opposite the compound. 
I'm told that who and which is when started school here. If you can look at this at these rocks here. Yeah. This was a building uh, where, st- where she started the uh, substandard A. This is the foundation that has left after it fell to this building and it has never built again. It is right here that Winnie's future life was drafted through her father Columbus, who was the principal. Columbus Madikizela was also minister in the local government and had the means to send Winnie for further schooling to Johannesburg. Good education at the time was rare for blacks. These were the days of apartheid South Africa, a system of racial segregation instituted in 1948 when Winnie was 12 years old. Black people were evicted into separate neighborhoods called townships. This is how Soweto, the southwest township in Johannesburg, came into being. In these townships, the blacks had their own services like schools and hospitals. All were inferior to the same services for whites. The blacks were only allowed out to work for their white masters in uptown areas, but were supposed to return before a blacks only curfew. The separation was also felt in a practical sense. There were separate buses for black and white, separate entrances to public buildings, all made more obvious by the separation signboards that became the international hallmark of apartheid. Apartheid was a fact of life for young Winnie in Bongweni. The biography Winnie Mandela, A Life, tells how white magistrates humiliated both her and her father by treating them like second-class citizens. It sowed Winnie's grudge against the apartheid system from an early age. She took this grudge with her when going to study in Johannesburg. The Chris Hani Baragwanath Hospital in Soweto. Winnie was working here as South Africa's first black social worker, having finished her education. The work in the hospital brought Winnie close to the hardships of the blacks in Soweto. Then, a few months later, she met Nelson Mandela, who lived in Soweto. They married just a year later. This wasn't romance, at least not at first. Winnie deliberately married straight into the liberation struggle and she embraced it. She joined the 1958 ban demonstration against the ID passbooks that blacks had to carry at all times. The demonstration sent Winnie to prison for the first time. The life I've led from that moment has always been in and out of prisons. I can no longer even remember how many times I've been arrested and how many times I've been actually jailed. There have been too many. Winnie, however, kept supporting her husband and the struggle. For psychologist Sats Cooper, Winnie's commitment demonstrated her devotion to her husband and her strength. Cooper was in prison with Nelson Mandela on Robben Island for his participation in the 1976 Soweto riots. He got to know both Nelson and Winnie well. She was not a naive person who came from the rural Transkei to Johannesburg to discover uh, what the ills of apartheid were. Already there was a certain uh, steeliness, if you like. She had uh, the necessary strength to uh, commit to such a relationship and she was uh, not as passive as one would expect in a relationship uh, where you had a strong male figure. Uh, She participated in her own right in activities even though she was much younger than he was. Despite the danger of being involved in the liberation struggle, Winnie stayed on. She and Nelson had two girls. She raised them under continuous police harassment and arrest. But things got even worse when Nelson Mandela 
was sentenced to life imprisonment for terrorist acts in 1964. But still, Winnie remained defiant. She was on the steps of the Supreme Court in Pretoria when the verdict was passed. Winnie Mandela suddenly found herself on the world stage. She became the voice of the liberation struggle. Pretoria has failed to rule our country. For Saths Cooper, now head of the Psychological Society of South Africa, Winnie had the conviction and the talent to take on this role. I don't think the world would have known a Nelson Mandela were it not for Winnie. Winnie stands out in a class of her own for having the chutzpah, for having the intellect, for having the beauty, and for having the understanding of the moment to take advantage of. And long before sound bites became normal, she had that ability. We are here today to tell you that that day is not far when we shall lead you to freedom. Amanda! Amanda! This is from me. Winnie even encouraged artists traveling outside South Africa to spread the message of Nelson and the struggle. Whether we're at shows, whether we're performing in stadiums or in halls, she would be there to say, you musicians, you writers, you painters, you've got the voice. More especially, you musicians or poets, talk about Mandela being released. Tell the world that we want Mandela released. I think this is the woman who kept the Mandela name alive. The anti-apartheid work meant Winnie kept being arrested, but somehow she got used to it. But there was one arrest she would never forget. The one she described in her memoirs, 491 Days, about her jailing in 1969 for having committed propaganda for the band ANC. She was shouted at, beaten, threatened with rape and murder kept awake and interrogated continuously. Life, a human being, was so sacrosanct that I could never on my own lift up a finger against any human being for ideological reasons. But what I went through, that personal experience hardened me so much that at the end of my interrogation, looking at my interrogators and what I had gone through, I knew that as I sat in that cell, in that cell if my own father or my brother walked in dangling a gun and he was on the other side, and I had a gun too in my hand in defense of the ideals for which I was being tortured, then I would fire. Winnie's struggle from then on would take a completely different direction. Being subjected to the kind of treatment, torture and humiliation that she was, she must have become very angry and wanted to seek uh, a kind of vengeance for that. And so the kinds of things that she embarked on thereafter were exemplary of that. You know, she became more outspoken uh, and in some instances uh, fairly uh, in your face with the authorities. She defied them open. She made challenging and provocative statements. Winnie took her anger back with her to Soweto. She got involved in the 1976 Soweto uprising, a riot immortalized in street art along the Villa Kazi street where the unrest broke out. The 
uprising was started by school children like this, demonstrating against making the white man's language Afrikaans compulsory in black secondary schools. There were running battles for days. Demonstrators, of which many were children, were killed by the police. The uprising was symbolized worldwide by this picture of a dead student, Hector Peterson, being carried by his crying friend. Winnie's alleged participation in the Soweto uprising preluded the next stage in her life. Conscious of her growing influence, the apartheid government banished Winnie to the remote town of Brantford in the then Orange Free State. Brantford was founded by the descendants of the original Dutch settlers that came to South Africa to start a new life. If there ever was a true white South Africa, it was here. Winnie Mandela was dumped in the area designated for blacks. She was brought to this makeshift house by the police that is still inhabited. The police didn't tell local residents who she was, only that they were not allowed to speak to her. Winnie is not forgotten here, and certainly not by her former neighbor, 73-year-old Nora Nomafa, who remembers well how Winnie lived. This is the kitchen. And here, there were, there were couples who were standing, which were standing here now for taking the dishes and what have you. And here was the washing uh, basin. This was the sink whereby she used to wash the dishes. And at this corner, there was a stove here, a coal stove, as you can see the chimney up here. Despite the fact that Nora was not supposed to talk to Winnie, they managed to become friends. Nora was helping Winnie when she was sick. I managed to help her. We took her to the doctor in Bloomington. Then from there, we were friends. Then Winnie wrote me a letter saying, now you are my best friend. I've never, ever had anyone to help me. As a good neighbor, Winnie started to help the people around Branford. Nora remembers how Winnie used to cook for her, but also was scared of the police for taking the food. She would make fire and cook mealy stamp. It takes time, Musa, right? And then she would say, please don't cook over there. I'm having the mealy, the, 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 the stamp over here. You must come and eat. Knowing very well that I am afraid of coming in, I won't come in. Instead, I might even just stand next to the fence there, uh, sending my dish saying that, could you kindly please do me a favor by doing this? Yes, yes, but we're just friends. Uh, then the best friend, in fact, was Winnie. After this, Winnie picked up her social work and asked Nora to assist in opening a medical clinic next to her home that over the years went up in ruins. Then Winnie organized a soup kitchen in this building and she opened the first crash in Brantford that still exists. This was another face of the militant and angry Winnie. This was the compassionate Winnie. All her efforts made Winnie very popular. Even the people of Brantford, they used to say, you are a good mother. Oh, we didn't want to hear a thing about Winnie. If I say Winnie, you must know that you are touching us because she was of a great help. She did her work, Winnie, tremendously in Brantford. Even today, if you are saying Winnie, the people of Brantford will say, Mama, Mama, because of her efforts in Brantford. The clinic was eventually destroyed by the ever-harassing police. They did it during one of Winnie's rare visits to Nelson Mandela on Robben Island. It made Winnie angry and defy her banishment and return to Soweto. Winnie's Brantford home is now set to become a museum. Going from Brantford to Soweto for Winnie was like jumping from the frying pan into the fire. Soweto in the late 1980s was the scene of running battles between police and groups opposing apartheid. 
when his militancy resurfaced. In a 1986 speech in Munsville, she called for violence. I am back with you where I belong. This is now the right time to take your country. We shall use the same language the Boers are using against us. They know only one language, the language of the Caspers. We have no, no arms. We have stones. We have boxes of matches. With our necklaces, we shall liberate this country. Necklacing is a South African technique of torturing and killing a person by putting a rubber tie around their neck and setting it on fire with petrol. The ANC, who were then mainly operating in exile, distanced themselves from Winnie's calls for violence. Sats Cooper says this made Winnie go for it alone. Faced with the hatred of the apartheid state and its agents, Faced with the lack of support from her own comrades, things would have happened in her mind to make her believe in her own power and ability, which would have created the room for behavior that may be regrettable later. Winnie's call for action didn't go unheard in Soweto, where there was already a culture of violence. South Africa is a very violent society. It's not become violent because of Winnie Mandela. It's been violent through colonial conquest at its sequela and through apartheid. People in Soweto today acknowledge that they didn't shy away from violence during the apartheid struggle. Mandela family friend Joyce Makubu is typical of many in Soweto. I'm telling you, as a very young, as a young, very young girl, I nearly became a murderer at a very tender age because I felt like this was too much. We have to live here. We have to survive here. We have to be able to go to the shops without fear. We have to be able to go to school without fear. Then I decided if it means I should kill somebody or go to jail, but I'm going to make a mark that we also have a right to stay here and be free and play with other kids if we want to. The police harassment in Soweto in the late 1980s made several youths join Winnie Mandela for shelter. These boys became the Mandela United Football Club. She had around her a lot of people. And that, you must understand, was something that I think she cherished because when she was banished to Brantford, she was isolated and there were periods when she was very much alone. And so to come back into Soweto and have people around her that were vibrant uh, would have been something she thrived on. But these same boys were the harbinger of many things going horribly wrong for women. The Mandela United Football Club degenerated into a violent gang terrorizing Soweto. Then the Mandela United Football Club slowly got infiltrated by secret police informers seeking intelligence on the ANC. The notion in Soweto about these informers created paranoia and anybody found to be one was killed, often by necklacing. It even led to the occurrence of cartoons like this. Winnie's Mandela United Football Club was eventually infiltrated by several informers, although they did not know each other. Then in 1988, 14-year-old Stompy Zepai was killed in Winnie Mandela's house on suspicion of being a police informer. According to Sats Cooper, it is unclear whether Winnie gave a direct order. But because of the paranoia caused by the informers, the slightest suspicion of being an informer uttered by Winnie would have been enough to be killed. They would be uh, second-guessing her thoughts if she uh, expressed a single uh, word against 
somebody or uh, gave a look that was disdainful, that would have been sufficient cause for them to act on it. To say, well, Mama feels like this, therefore we must do it. Yvonne Chaka Chaka insists Winnie would never condone acts like that. She opened her house to young children, everybody. And unfortunately, some bad things happened there. I don't think it was of her making. She didn't condone that. She didn't allow those things to happen. But they happened. You know, when you, when you house lots of people, when you give people a roof over their head, you don't have lots of control of what they're going to be doing. So really, I don't want to, to, to paint her black because she was trying to do good. Killing an informer was business as usual in Soweto. A child, though, that was deplorable. But in the madness of those days, the distinction between adult and child ceased to exist. During apartheid, the roles were terribly bizarre. You know, they weren't the kind of uh, controls that normal societies would have, where the parent is in charge. Here you have uh, a stompy sepe who at 11, 12, was a leader in his community. Whereas you'd expect that his parent, his teacher would be. But the roles are reversed. So it's that abnormality that uh, allows for the kind of uh, murder, if you like, of somebody like this. It left the people of Soweto in shock. Winnie's former neighbors remember all too well the insanity of the time. I sympathized a lot because I, I, I had seen firsthand what she did for us and in the community. Now, to me, that was a black mark. That incident was a black mark. And uh, I would say to, to, to an extent, I was hoping against hope that the accusations are false, are wrong, you see. But then, as everybody knows, she went to court and she was found guilty for this and that and couldn't be too good for her image. Did it make you sad? To a point, yes. I'm sure it made everybody sad. Mm, I think in the 1980s, I was no... I just hear all those stories after 1990s, what would she have done so and so? But in fact, from bad to good, I think she must be forgiven. Why? Because she, at last, she has done good things to help people not to die. The ANC again distanced itself from Winnie Mandela. And from his cell, Nelson ordered her to disband the football club. She did. An investigation was started against Winnie Mandela on charges of complicity in murder. But the charges were overshadowed by the release of Nelson Mandela in 1990. This was the moment that Winnie Mandela had been struggling for during the last 27 years. But the happiness was short-lived, since only two years later, Winnie would find herself separated from Nelson Mandela. You're listening to the cutting edge here on Irie FM. Roger Hasfall here holding the fort for Muta. And of course, Shamara here keeping our company as well in the journey tonight. We'll go until 2 o'clock. And that was the first part of a, a two part feature um, looking at the, looking 
in depth into the life of Winnie Mandela, born 1936, transcended this life 2018. We're going to have more after the break. Yeah, man, you're listening to the cutting edge here on Area Femino, August. August? April. I get you A. A for August, A for April. But it's April 4th. Yeah, and we're paying tribute to Winnie Mandela tonight here on the cutting edge. And uh, we heard the first part of an in-depth look into the life of Winnie Mandela. We're going to go to part two now. Because of cases of fraud and corruption. This second episode of a two-part documentary explores how Winnie Mandela maintained her clean, iconic status despite her repeated scandals. The first part, Winnie Mandela, Black Saint or Sinner, explored how Winnie's support for Nelson Mandela led to his release in 1990. Now, in part two, we explore how that heroic image was tarnished by scandals and how Winnie miraculously managed to survive them. Mandela's release in 1990 was what the nation had been hoping for since 1964. We were ecstatic and uh, life was real again. And uh, it was just too much excitement. But for Winnie, the happiness was short-lived. Her ghost from the past was soon to resurrect. There was the Stompy Sapai murder case for which she was sentenced in 1991. And it was revealed Winnie had been unfaithful during Nelson's imprisonment. Winnie's scandals were harming Nelson Mandela's bid for the 1994 presidential election. He felt compelled to separate from her in 1992. Nelson Mandela made his decision public with this declaration. My love for her remains undiminished. However, in view of the tensions that have risen owing to differences between ourselves in a number of issues in recent months, we have mutually agreed that a separation would be best for each one of us. Things around Winnie quietened until 1993 when she was elected chair lady of the ANC Women's League. Then Nelson Mandela in 1994 was elected as South Africa's first black president. Never, never, and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another and suffer the indignity. and suffer the indignity of being the scum of the world. President Mandela made Winnie a deputy minister in his cabinet, like a reward for her struggle to liberate him. I but for Winnie, please. things went horribly wrong Next again. Just a year later, she was found responsible for mismanagement and dismissed. And the tide kept turning against Winnie. She was called before the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the TRC, in 1997. The TRC was set up to investigate wrongdoings during the apartheid era. Winnie's 1988 Stompy murder case was under public scrutiny again. But instead of cleaning up her reputation, she gave a forced apology. I am saying it is true. Things went horribly wrong. I fully agree with that. And for that part of those painful years when things went horribly wrong and we were aware of the fact that there were factors that led to that, for that I am deeply sorry. Winnie's seemingly cold-hearted apology has been studied by many. 
Amongst them is Professor Sheila Menches of the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. Menches is a lecturer in political studies and knows Winnie because she was one of her students. She always came surrounded by bodyguards who stood outside the door while we had our classes. She wasn't the best student that I'd ever had, but her points of view was all, were always interesting. She um, she certainly had a, a sort of very basic, streetwise view of politics that was quite different from the other students. This was in the early 1990s, and Professor Menches met Winnie again in 1997 because she was affiliated to the TRC. So was Piers Pigou now project leader South Africa for the International Crisis Group. Pigou and Menches both say Winnie had other things on her mind than apologizing. There is no question that the, um, that, that was a performance. It was an orchestrated performance, I think. And I think it was one that, that had a... Um, that was very, very aware, and I'm not sure that, that she was the only one who orchestrated it. I'm quite sure that there were people around her who were um, governing the way in which she was presenting herself. Pigu says Winnie considered the TRC as a smear campaign against her because she was vying for a senior position in the ANC. Mrs. Mandela's response throughout was that everyone was lying. Everyone was mad or crazy or had some kind of vendetta against her. And there were certainly elements inside the ANC at that stage, even though her former husband was president, who were dead against her getting anywhere in that contest. And uh, in some respects, uh, Mrs. Mandela also saw this as part of a campaign to bring her down in terms of her own political ambitions. So I think she was in combative mood from the get-go. She knew she would face a lot of her detractors in terms of the specific allegations. So she took on a stance which was uh, rigid and inflexible and unapologetic. South African psychologist Saths Cooper says that Winnie's rigid posture is still to be understood because a lot of information on the Soweto violence was not available for the TRC. I think that the truth of this matter will still be told someday. I think that uh, many others who were there uh, ought to have testified they didn't. Uh, those who stood up to uh, condemn her um, had evidence, but they did not provide this evidence. But her appearance before the TRC was not the end of Winnie's fall from grace. In 2003, she was found guilty of misusing her position in the ANC Women's League to sell funeral policies. Psychologist Saths Cooper says that in the early days of South African parliamentary democracy, there were no effective controls of power, and that might have affected Winnie's behavior. That's something that happens when power has its own uh, life and the power itself envelops people. So that power, uh, if you feel that you are untouchable, you will engage in things where it's easy to say that you're doing something on behalf of the people and the people and your own interests become blurred. And then the memory of suffering over all this period, you know, that adds to the feeling of entitlement in, the, in that uh, situation. Professor Menches also believes that her former student might have granted herself privileges in return for her long struggle. What we have seen is a sense in which, you know, we didn't fight this struggle to be poor, as Matsung Gonyama said. Uh, and, and I think there's a sense of... Um, of entitlement, uh, especially from kind of royalty. Royalty should be supported. And this is the royal family of South Africa that we're talking about. Winnie stepped down from the ANC Women's League. And in retrospect, the 13 year period since Mandela's release reads like a catalog of disaster for Winnie.
Yet Winnie's dramatic life began to attract artists, musicians, film directors, and fashion designers. There was the 2013 movie Long Walk to Freedom with Winnie Mandela. The most beautiful girl I've ever seen. There was the 2011 movie Winnie by South African director Daryl Rogue. He was touched by Winnie's life. When she came to Johannesburg and got embroiled in what she got embroiled in, then she meets Nelson Mandela. And now he turns out to be ultimately the most famous man of all time, other than Jesus, perhaps, you know what I mean? I don't know, you know? So that's an incredible story, it's an, like in its own right, how a young country girl falls in love with this guy who becomes the most famous guy in the world, and go, she goes through all of that trials and tribulations. I became the best stick fighter in the district. There wasn't a boy who could beat me. You are a stick fighter. Uh, yes, so watch out. And even in South Africa's reclusive opera scene, Winnie's life inspired musicians and writers. Bongani Ndodana Breen is the composer of Winnie the Opera. He found that her life had everything opera requires. She um, has suffered tragedies and, and she's lived through uh, some of the, uh, I think, most um, uh, fundamental periods of our, of, of our, of our progress to, 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 to liberation. And for me, the, this whole life that she has led is a, is a tableau that is very operatic. So it was not a difficult thing for me to, to, to conceive of her life as an opera. <laughs> The opera was well received by the audience and certainly by Winnie Mandela herself. And I was glad I refused to read the script and I refused to be told in advance what was going to be portrayed of me uh, because I wanted it uh, as an honest evaluation of the journey we have traveled and it is an honest uh, portrayal. And I'm very happy about it. This is not doctored. It is as it was. Yes, man. The saw, the cutting edge here on Iria FM. Roger Haspel here holding the fort. So I have the final part of this feature on Winnie Mandela and looking in depth into the life of our Queen Mother, the Mother of the Nation, Winnie Mandela. We go to that last part of this feature. The life of Winnie Mandela inspired a generation of musicians. Singer Yvonne Chaka Chaka dedicated a song to Winnie in 1987 when she was banned by the apartheid regime. We wrote a song called Winnie Winnie Mandela, Winnie Winnie, but obviously um, it was not allowed. So we then decided to change the song and wrote it, I'm winning my dear love which was very clever because the song was saying winnie winnie my dear love i'm winning 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 but when i went into the stadium to sing the song was winnie winnie mandela winnie winnie so i think we were very smart as young people we knew how to turn things the way the regime wanted it but we knew what the song meant. The dramatic life of Winnie somehow earned a big respect. And this respect is also reflected in iconic images. There is a clothing line called the Winnie Mandela Signature Collection, designed by the South African Sonwabile Ndamasi. He is also the designer of the shirts of Nelson Mandela. She is a such of an inner soul person. Who doesn't dress to be seen, but dress to make a statement? Anything that she puts into her body, it's a statement on its own because she understood the culture of African person. Winnie Mandela, despite her tainted image, became a brand larger than life. And she contributed to that in Soweto by turning the house where she lived with Nelson into a museum and opening a restaurant next to it. Today, buses are dropping off herds of tourists. Local entrepreneurs thrive on it, but one could wonder whether visitors would have a notion of the violence that raged through these streets. 
But when asked about Winnie's controversies, people in South Africa did not forget them. South Africans in several layers of society do remember, but show forgiveness. I believe everybody deserves a second chance. Okay? And I also believe in live and let live. So, with that in mind, yes. Uh, forgive is a beautiful, strong word. As far as I'm concerned, God only forgives. But give her a chance, let her move on. It's up to her to prove herself right or wrong, whatever the case may be. If you were put under those circumstances, or if I was put under those circumstances, I'm, I'm sorry, I would have come out uh, uh, a, a, a much worse person. But she has been able, I think, to have so much compassion um, for people. And I think she's come out of those experiences um, maybe wiser, I suppose, but certainly she's come out of those, I think, stronger. This is a woman who spent 27 years on the front line fighting to liberate her husband. Despite anything that happened during then, the Stompy incidents, the so-called lovers, all of that stuff, who cares? The point is, if it wasn't for Winnie Mandela, we would never have been sitting in this garden now having this conversation, I believe, you know? She was a, a champion of the liberation struggle in South Africa. South African analyst Piers Pigu noticed this forgiveness, but says it is something else, that the majority in South Africa prefer to forget about their past to get on with their lives. I'm curious about the notion of forgiveness. I think in South Africa, the, the, it, this is more about avoidance rather than forgiveness. I think it's about not engaging and, and disengaging as opposed to actively forgiving somebody. According to Professor Menches, Winnie created her position during the struggle against apartheid. And in the years after, she solidified her position by grooming herself into a savior of the poor. She never relinquished her critical voice. And, for example, when there were problems, when there were deaths anywhere in the townships, the first person to be on the scene was Winnie Mandela talking very loudly and saying, where is the executive of the ANC? Where are our leaders? Are they too afraid to come into the townships? Well, here I am. So she was already saying, well, I'm an independent person. I'm an independent leader. And I can stand here as one of the leaders. I come from the rural areas, and that is why I understand the poverty of our people more than anyone else because uh, I lived it. Shall we? <laughs> and Winnie Mandela seems to have momentum in current times. More than two decades after the abolishment of apartheid, a new separation in South Africa has developed. The separation between black and white transformed into a separation between rich and poor. South Africa is now amongst the countries that have the deepest poverty gap in the world. The country, with its nature and culture, has all the elements needed to live a comfortable life. But for the majority of the blacks in the townships, not much has changed. Winnie seems to be touched by it. I deal with those cases every day of my life. And uh, most of the time, when I'm not in Parliament and I get attacked by the DA, I am with the people in the squatter camps. I deal with those people every day of my life. And it, it may be the changes uh, here and there, which of course are admirable. We have taken strides in this country, but our greatest problem is the poverty of our people. Winnie keeps drawing attention to this in her public appearances, implicating that the ANC government has failed. We can have those great policies, uh, we can have a great constitution, but none of those things translate in dealing with the poverty of our people. And for as long as the people are as poor as they are, this country is in trouble. And these ramblings, these demonstrations for water, for delivery of services, housing, we have a problem. Winnie is raising attention for the plight of people like 61-year-old Mamokem Mathe from Soweto. Because other people, they still stay in the shack. There is no electricity, there is no water, there is no job. 
and Sintizwa Mkanazi, a mother of five, says that nowadays it's tough to make ends meet. And this feeds frustrations towards the ANC. Things are not the way we thought they are going to be like. Why? As she says, it's a poor job. If you, you get a job, less salary, more hours, only to find that one person is doing a job for three people for one salary. And then 59-year-old Monday Ndaba is also disappointed because things only improved by half. Education has changed. The sad thing is there are a lot of kids who are qualified. They have degrees, but they have no jobs today. And uh, that sort of cancels out that the education aspect. What's the point of being educated when you cannot use your education? I've got two nieces with degrees today. It's been years. Still, they still don't have jobs. This disappointment in the ANC government gave Winnie Mandela's campaign for the poor firm ground, and it helped to repair a tainted public image. It also enabled her to stay in Soweto, living amongst the people she both supported and disappointed. And with the scandals behind her, this could have been a quiet retirement at almost the age of 79. But not for Winnie. Things again seem to be going horribly wrong. First, her former husband Nelson Mandela passed away at the end of 2013. And Nelson Mandela hadn't included Winnie in his will. Piers Pigu understands how painful that can be for Winnie, but not her reaction afterwards. She shocked the nation once more by trying to get hold of Nelson Mandela's ancestral home in Kunu. Some people do see it as uh, unfair that he didn't provide some kind of symbolic gesture towards uh, Mrs. Mandela, uh, Mrs. Madagazella Mandela. Uh, so, yes, I mean, I can understand that, but her subsequent actions in terms of, of uh, trying to get the house in Kunu, uh, I think portray her in an extremely negative light. Piers Pigu says the claim on Kunu is also amazing, since Winnie had a good income through her struggle pension and through a South African MP's salary. But he says that might not be enough. She has a small grouping that, uh, of PAs and bodyguards and so forth that, that, that need to be covered. So there's a lot of expenses to keep the uh, Winnie Mandela uh, motorcade on the road. And Hunu is clearly seen as a potential money earner, uh, particularly if the gardens are finished down there, which are, are the public gardens, uh, Remembrance Gardens, will be a place where tourists will visit, money will be extracted, there'll be some kind of visitor's centre and so forth. So, yes, I understand why people are seeing this as uh, that Mrs Mandela is being driven by uh, potential pecuniary interests. The matters surrounding Winnie's claim on the house in Kunu are unfolding. It's these contradictory elements that, that are fascinating about her. Um, and I think that there is still more to be written about her, be, to be said about her, yeah. more to be understood about her, so that we can get a fully rounded picture of this really remarkable person who suffered the most enormous um, harassment, torture, uh, but who who is through it all sort of remained this with with her dignity somehow intact whether or not she fades to grey gracefully uh, and and retires quietly into the countryside that seems unlikely, given her persona. And I think that people will always be interested in what her opinion is about the extent to which the ANC has achieved what it set out to and what are the major struggles. Uh, she's been critical of uh, the movement that she struggled for. And she has been critical of the things that have been happening in the name of uh, the organization that she has given her life for. She's going to keep on 
sort of making statements and going to uh, present herself at these different rallies, at these different tragic moments and so on. But I, I don't think, I don't see her becoming uh, a leading figure in any government in the future. I just think that in a way she's, she's, now, she's now been put into uh, retirement rather than perhaps retiring. And what of Winnie herself? She says she is proud of her life, but she is not necessarily the only mother of the nation. I, I never felt uh, it was referring to me alone. I, I considered all the women uh, who have sacrificed uh, their lives. Uh, if, uh, my age group, I, I consider one of them as mothers of the nation. I never thought and never claimed that it is my personal title in any way because I was I didn't give it to myself. It's, it's the masses of this country I threw stones with uh, when we were fighting and uh, I'm one of those who engaged the enemy physically as well and very proud of it that I did what I did underground and I was part of those who brought down uh, the regime. So I don't really mind whatever they call me. Sometimes that mother of the nation is translated negatively. I don't really give a damn. What is important is the fact that uh, I am one of those who brought them down. And I walked all about that. And I'll do it again. Africa. And to end this two-part documentary, one can conclude that one question hasn't been answered yet about Winnie Mandela. Is she a saint or is she a sinner? Come on, Come on, Come on, All right, that was a two-part feature looking on the life in depth of Winnie the late, great Winnie Mandela. Of course, cutting edge here on IRFM, Roger Hasfall here holding the fort for motor. And of course, uh, we're going to take a break. But after the break, we're going to open the lines. We're going to ask people to call us. And, you know, we don't know the usual discussions here on the cutting edge. So now is a good time to start getting those calls in. Let us have a little discussion. We can't talk about Winnie. We can't talk about anything regarding, you know, the whole consciousness, the black consciousness, the African-centeredness. The African resistance, everything, you know, the Pan Africanism. So after the break, you can call and let us talk. And uh, just to remind you that we are heading into the new day. Yes, man. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the second half of the cutting edge here on IRFM. And um, the first part, of course, you know, we featured, we look in depth into the life and the works of the great Winnie Mandela. And of course, we in Jamaica here standing in solidarity with the South African people at this time as we mourn um, the passing of this icon, international icon, as we see it. The lady who was the mother of the apartheid struggle. Yeah. So, we hear that there will be a state funeral for Winnie. And uh, we'll, you know, watch and see how things uh, progress here as, you know, they prepare for the funeral of, of this legend if of our times. Yeah. And, uh, of course, she really was at the forefront, as we say, of, of the struggle while her, her late husband, Nelson Mandela, was incarcerated. She was the one who was taking all of the battering and the bruising. I will remember that. I will never forget that. Because, as we were saying earlier... Um, a lot was taken away from the original inhabitants of the land of South Africa. People were denationalized. We're talking about millions of people who were denationalized and stripped of their dignity and uh, lowered to the category of dogs and even less under the wicked system of apartheid yeah so we said earlier that today was also the day when they assassinated martin luther king yeah 
And uh, this was his very, very last speech. In fact, many people saw, said he saw it coming. But this was his very last speech before he was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee, 50 years ago. Somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. So that's because I say we aren't going to let any dogs or water hoses turn us around. We aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. Textbook in the primary and secondary schools in Jamaica. Yeah, we still have as a head of state, a European as our head of state, mm -hmm. rather than someone from Jamaica as the head of state. Mm -hmm. Because the Governor General does not represent the people of Jamaica, but represents a foreigner whose office and rulership is coming from people who enslaved our African race. Right. Jamaica must become a republic headed and led by Jamaicans for the benefit of Jamaicans. The vast majority, over 90%, who are of the African race. Because Jamaica belongs to the African race by the blood, sweat, and tears so? of our ancestors that paid for it during the enslavement, the biggest genocide in history, every time. Yeah, man. So keep on with the good work, brother Raj, yeah, man. Roger. Respect, and man. Africans worldwide at home and abroad, keep on fighting. Never, ever give up because we will win. We as Africans will win. I, Mandingo, student of Marcus Gavi, always said that every time. And blessed love to Marcus Gavi Jr., the son of Marcus Gavi, physics teacher and political leader mm -hmm. from Kingston Technical Days in the 1960s in Jamaica. And to all Africans, yes, Toki from Franklin Town, another Pan Africanist from our school days, and still is. To this day, we don't change. Every time, one creator, one aim, one destiny. Up your mighty race, we shall accomplish what we will. The words of Marcus Gavi: Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our African minds. Marcus Gavi, the greatest African leader ever. Jamaica must be a republic. Blessed love. Blessed love, man. Africa for the Africans, those are new abroad, man. Those are new abroad. It's twice the mother's cousin, the first one, Amy Ashwood, and Amy Jake Schiavi, the mother of Marcus Schiavi Jr. Yeah, Africa for the Africans. Those for those at home and abroad. abroad. And all the islands and the Caribbean are African islands. Yes. We're not giving them up. No. We're not giving them up. It's part of our reparations. Every island in the Caribbean. Yeah, is an man. African island. Yeah, man. Paid yeah. for by the blood, sweat, sweat and tears of our African ancestors. Yeah. We shall achieve victory and we shall defeat our racist enemies and the traitors who work for them. Mandingo, the Africanist, the Marcus Gavi, telling it like it is. Same Blessed sir. love. Bless up yourself, Mandingo. Every time. All right, every sir. Time. We'll talk. Ujambo. Bless. Bless, bless. Yes, man. Mandingo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So, as you say, one of the line, you know, so ones and ones can call, you know, make we have a chat. Yeah. Um, you know, th there's a games, you know, Commonwealth Games currently underway. It started yesterday, Jamaica time. You know, Australia is about maybe around 15 to 18 hours ahead of us. And it's 71 countries that participate in these games 
And all 71 of these countries are what you call now former colonies of Great Britain, England in particular. The Commonwealth Games was, you know, f um, first stage in 1930. And it's, of course, as we say, um, f uh, former colonies of England. Something very interesting happened in Australia today. Today, while the opening ceremony was um, being taken place, members of the original Aborigines of Australia, they made themselves present and they staged marches and rallies during the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games today, declaring that they are still as the original inhabitants of Australia. They are still landless. They are still being oppressed. They are still being marginalized. They are still being ostracized by the white Australians. And they use the platform of the opening of the Commonwealth Games today to indicate that as the original inhabitants in Australia, they are still facing ostracism and they are still being landless and they are still being oppressed. Now that is very significant because over 200 years ago, when the first British man, and a lot of people don't know that the first man the first white man or the first Englishman who went over into Australia was the very man who came here to Jamaica to become governor in the 1860s. Talking about Governor Eyre, Governor Eyre who led the viciousness on black people in Jamaica. He was an explorer. Governor Eyre, he was an explorer and he was, he was sent on an exploration mission down under what they call Australia. And he was there, they sent him as an explorer. Governor Eyre, the same Governor Eyre we are talking who was in Jamaica, you know, a lot of people don't know that, you know, he went there. In Australia right now, there's a big lake by the name of Lake Eyre. Named after the same governor, John Eyre, that was governor of Jamaica. Lake Eyre, you can Google it, you can check it, and, and it says that. Lie me telling. Governor Eyre. But him sent him, and he was also, he, he became like one, you know, because, you know, them time that when England sent out people, them say anywhere them go, them conquer, them supposed to conquer and in the name of England and become the head of the country. So I saw England usually do them thing one time. Yeah. And he was, he was one of the first people who started the oppression of the ab Aborigines in Australia. It's a wicked thing these people did, you know, to us, you know. Wicked, wicked thing, you know. When you look at all of the countries that, 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 that they conquered or invaded and set up shop, them set up, them set up shop almost in you know, almost all of Africa. Most of the Caribbean islands, them, South, Central and South America, North America, islands in the Pacific, and so on. And islands down under, New Zealand and them places there. Yeah. Wipe out the dignity of a particular set of people in a particular set of race. Yeah. So today in Australia was a very symbolic event in terms of the original members of the original Aborigines, you know, coming out and telling the world that they are still being ostracized in their own country. They are still being marginalized. They are still being pushed aside in them original country 
as the original inhabitants. Yeah, that is still happening in this day and age, 21st century. Greetings. Good morning, darling. Hi. What a program. Oh, thank you very much. And Tom Mandingo, he said just about everything all of us would say if we could. I'm 95 now. And in the middle of my living room is the biggest picture of Winnie that I could ever have been given by a young man who painted it for me. Yes. And through the years... I've talked to Winnie and she to me. I call her my daughter because I am 95. I have that right. Right. But uh, bless her soul. And I took the liberty of saying many years ago on stage, if she had a husband in prison for uh, uh, 27 years and uh, could only be accused of one man. She's lucky because, believe me, if I had a husband in prison for 27 years, 27 lovers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a dirty old lady, huh? <laughs> but your program is magnificent. Yeah, man. Give thanks, man. How, how, how happy that you are listening and in tune, you know? Are you kidding at 95? Yes. I sat up to make sure I didn't go to go to sleep. Yes. But the program is well done, well put together. And uh, even though uh, Mr. Mandela, whom I didn't like, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah. because I felt that when he knew he was in trouble, he should have run across Africa to another land and not be captured by a white man in his country mm. for 27 years. He should have run to West Africa. Mm -hmm. And all the love that I have for Winnie, I think it is very much felt here in Jamaica. Right. They may not say anything, but they're listening to you. Yeah. And little darling, you seem to have quite a hold on history, too. And by the way, Africa cracked this week. The land Africa cracked across. And I think it's in loving acceptance of Winnie in its bowels. Well, right. All right? Yeah. My darling, keep on doing the good work you're doing. Yeah, man, we appreciate it, man. I appreciate the call. All right. Yeah, man, and take care. We'll talk again. All right, darling. All right, sister. Hey, sister Samad. Right. Greetings. Yeah, man, give thanks. They are doing a very good job. Yeah, man, give thanks, brother. And I'm very happy to have heard Queen Mother Smart. You should need to get her attack. Queen Mother Smart. Go on, you go on. The reason why I said Sister Smart is because it's so usually call her from day one. But anyway, it's Queen Mother Smart still. <laughs> yeah, man, greetings. Hi, Lee, hi, Mr. Robert. Hi, Lee, hi. Hi, Lee, hi, hi, Lee, hi. hi. What's up, go on? Why, I'm in the center of St. Thomas here. Yeah. yeah, man, all out of East, man. Well, we have a nice little sunshine here, you know. How are you, sir? Yeah. Yeah, man, we have a nice little sunshine here. Don't know. Yes, mm. I am. And I give thanks and praise, you know. See, give thanks and praise, yeah. man. Yes, I am. I. Mm. Yeah, man, I have to bless up Mandela. To stand up on the back of the year. See. Yeah, man. I know I have to bless that man, you know, see, can you stand up on the back of the hill? Yeah, man, and the, you know, wa- the winning, you know, winning. Yes, yes, yeah, I am. Uh, you know, I, I see where I don't know. I and I, 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 I never watch him since he was advertising him on the TV. Who that? Man, Miss Ma- Queen Mandela. Oh, yes. Why? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, man. It's right, young Mandela set the trench, you know. True. So right now, and I can't stop and give my special big up, you know, see it. Right. Yeah, man. And the next thing you see, fire, man. Mm-hmm. You see the crime now with the country, yeah? Yeah. You see kite, you know. True, man. Yeah, yeah man. You see kite, man. Yeah, man. All type of crime. You see the man, them flip over the crime. The man, them put man in the hurt, man, them put food there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I see, tell you, I tell you, yeah. I got the man of my one nowadays. Every mm. day, me I tell a star, the crime mm. is gone. Hi, mm. me I tell him. I'm left, with, I'm left with a mess, man. So, and that, and, and that, that a part of the mess where we in right now. We just uh, kill off one yeah. and the other. Because it's yeah. just a mess over we're left in, you know. 
you know, mm-hmm. see, and hear this, uh, hear the thing now. The man, the, the man, them no, no one invent them one thing, you know. Mm-hmm. The man, them are depend upon another man, property, and another man, sweat, you know, see, it. Mm-hmm. another man, liberty. Mm-hmm. So, to that now, no man, no one push it. Every man, I look on every man and say, boy, I look on things overnight and them things, you know, see, mm-hmm. but I know, so it's set in here, mm-hmm. you know, see, it. and so Papa say, you know. Yeah, you know, see, Papa yeah. say, man, to come together and let us live as one. True. You know, see, True. I wrote to the pan a child. Yeah. See, mm. and I see quiet man. When I know, when I know, when I know man, a baby, when I know baby, a police, when I know police, a soldier, everybody me, I tell a star. Mm. You know, see, it. now my dear diamond, I see this in here. You know, see. It. Yeah. Yeah. Look how much I go land there, yeah. The man, him can cut down the land, him rasta. Plus on ganja and some food, you know, see it, and Lego violence, Lego killing, you know, see it. Yeah. And if you know that, man, we know some of the murderers are supposed to leave that, but I don't care, I too tired. Mm-hmm. I've been different in our country, you know, Rasta. That's true, man. You know, yes, see? I live, yes, I live, yes, yeah. I grow, yes, I go stay, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man, I give the two, I will give two bubble, two bless. More like Bongo here and Bongo Shah. Bless up the rest of our life, man, you know, see it. Mm hmm. Yeah, man. See? Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm in love with the whole program in here. Yeah, man. We give thanks, man. You know what we have to do. Yeah, man. Family, you know? We have to give know. thanks to the IRS to Farah. You know, see? See? It. see it. Yeah, man. And I hope the IRS keep it up. See? I just want to oh, play it. Oh, we're not going to drop it, no. We're not going to drop it. Eh? We're not going to drop it, man. No, yeah. The IRS can't drop it. We're not going to drop it. Mm. You know, see? It. Mm. We, have a, yeah, we, have, we have a whole heap of work for doing, you know. We have a whole heap of yeah. work. You know. A 500 yeah. years, a 500 years worth of setback we get, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, so, yeah, man. I mean, you know, we have, a, yeah. we, we, we have a fight for reclaim back. We're rightful place in you know, this earth. Rightful yeah. place as people with dignity. As people yeah. with equal rights. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, you know see people yeah, are true. creators of civilization. True, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, man. We have to do yeah, what we have to do, man. You know, we have to just whatever media. We, we, we are the medium. You see, a lot of people, a lot of us, you know, we are the medium. You know, the, a, a powerful medium like the media, and you know, we not use it the right way. We not no, use it. We not use it the right way. Yeah, very few people are do it. And yeah. you know, yeah. and we have to give thanks to the a very few, few people who do it. Yeah, yeah. a few intelligent people are doing it, you know, see mm-hmm. it. Yeah, you man. know, see it. That's why I feel safe the government put up some more school in the island. Because I check so that it's more properly and better, you know, because the man they need to learn, Master. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. They can't know the culture, man. Mm. I don't feel them, you know, see it. I don't feel it, Mr. Mr. Roger. See Tell her the truth, I don't mm. feel it, I don't. Yeah. I and I as a Rasta man at all for the eye tonight. So last year, I bless the eye is this chain two sentence with the eye, you know, see? Same, same. They are blessed up the operator, Jano. Yeah, man. I don't feel it, I don't yeah. feel it, I don't feel to me a car again, I yeah. The man, the man turn it in a cowboy tone and them things. Mm. Like, I'm, like I'm Mexico, them there. Let me take this thing out of my mouth, yeah, you know, see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like talk it, man. Jano. Yeah. Man, the man turn to me a like a gun tone and them little things there. Mm. Them thing they don't work. Sel- them thing they selfish work, you know? man, man too selfish man. Man, man, man. You know, see it? Yeah. Man, I'm too selfish man. Mm. You know, see it? We do a Sarasta. Mm. We're not a day and night. Mm. You know, see it? Yeah, man. That's why right now, you see, every day, you know, mm. I go down to our Princess Margaret Hospital, you know, go to get some little check up on them things. You know? But I'm around there. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Because I check myself more time. And, I tell you, Tom, you see the situation. It dread, it wicked, it wicked me, I tell you, Mr. Raja. It mm. wicked me, I tell you, Star. Mm. You know how I feel, Seto? You see, you see, I now, one year old go up to 30 odd. Yeah. I feel so when them go to the clinic, you know, them supposed to pay money, you know. Yeah, man, pay if you see the doctor. I see from 50, go down, then get a free, eh? free check up to. So you say you want, no you, you, you want, okay, I don't understand you still, yeah. but where you say, you say you want people under 30 for pay? Yeah, from, num- from one go up to 30, supposed okay. to pay to see the doctor. Okay. And from 50, go down get a health card, free mm. check up. Mm. Yeah. Because right now, to the, to the condition where I sit down there, the nurse them not get no money either. 
Yeah, it's a never ending story. Them not, them not get no money. Never ending story, you know? You know, see, it and mm. this man again, him just have the little money, just have grown and do have some little on call for police. Mm. When they look at grassroots man and road one for fix on them little thing there. Mm. See? Mm. Yeah. The grassroots man and road one fix you know, because plenty of people live in the country you now. Mm. You know, see? Plenty of mm. people live in the country and mm -hmm. we do a little farming and them thing there, you know, see? Mm. So, them big guys, you know, they on them big talk and money contests and big man talk. Them you know them other two, you know, see? Right. Yeah. Anyway. And money contests and Big man can't test them, mm. the band. Anyway. I mean, I see them do not at all. Yeah, man, anyway, give thanks you know, to see? the no. Give thanks to the no. You don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I. I, 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 man. Bless up St. Thomas. I, 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 just have you from the St. Thomas, you talk yeah, to, you man. know. Bless up St. Thomas, man. Don't know. I feel what I, 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 Creating a civilization where human beings of whatever color, race, or creed should be born with the equal privileges of the fundamental human rights as established by the League of Nations with respect to all human beings. But if human beings are what they are supposed to be, then surely this cannot be seen in both of them. And if the beast was discovered in Adolf Hitler and Mussolini, the Antichrist, evidently, this can be seen in President Botha, the Mosquito. Greetings. Hello. Hello, is this Roger? Yes, it is. Yes, just Dean Breeze, how are you doing? Hi, I'm um, Queen Mara, how are you doing, man? I'm doing well, I've been listening to you. What a wonderful program. Oh, I thank you very much, man. I thank you very much, and I'm glad to know that you're listening, man. Yes, man, always. Yes, always. man, yes, you know, man. Especially about Winnie Mandela, man. Yes. Because, you know, I've had the, the pleasure and honor of touring South Africa three times. Yes. Doing poetry in Johannesburg, Durban, Cape Town. In fact, the last time I was there, I was with Muta Baruta. See it, see it there? And, Look at you that. know, yeah. I was amazed. I met some young poets from Soweto. Mm -hmm. so I couldn't understand why they were so against Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. And they said, you don't see how white people love him. He's, so, he's the reason why we didn't take back our land and take back our diamonds and take back our gold. Yes. He allowed the white man to get away with all of the wealth of the country. Yeah, man, that was one And thing all that... we got were governmental positions. Yes. And yes. When I was amazed. They took me through the, the ghettos of Johannesburg. And when I saw how black people were living there, I cried. Squalors, yes. And this was years after the end of apartheid and the freedom of Mandela and all of it. Mm. And I cried. Yeah. And, I, you know, the young poets were so angry. Yes. And these are people who, who love Winnie. Yes. For the stance that she took and they understood what happened to her. Yes, yes, yes. You know, so I'm really glad to hear this show about Winnie telling her life and all of that, you know? Yes. Because the, the, the young people of, 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 um, of South Africa were very very concerned about what was happening in the country. Yes. And you see, just the other day, the new, the new Prime Minister has yes. said, no, he's taking back the land. Yes, man. Uh, yeah, yes, he's It's there. about time, my brother. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. True. Because that is what has defeated us. They took our land. Yeah, man, and give us the Bible, as Joe McKenna said. Yes. Mm. And now in Jamaica, they give us the gun. Yes. <laughs> now that we turn it on ourselves, they give it to us. Mm. When it was time to turn it on them, they didn't give us the gun. Sure. But now we turn it on ourselves, they give it to us. Sure. Sure. Serious. You Serious know? thing. Yeah, Serious man. thing. Yeah, thank, man. My, thank you, my brother. I really is a good show. Very good show. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, man. All the best. Yeah, All man. Right. And we'll Thanks talk so again. Long. Yeah, man. Yeah, All right, man. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Greetings. Greetings, Roger. Ah. A G-Lux. Winsburg Gentles. From St. Anne's Beer. From St. Anne's Beer. Yeah. That's right. You are going on. I'm um, yeah. just up for putting out something forward for Winnie. Yeah, man. She's a, she's a blessed empress. Definitely. She's my she mother and she's my baby. Yeah, she I tell you. Um, Straight. That's what I mean. More mm -hmm. young black women today should aspire to be like Winnie. Exactly. 
You understand? I love Mandela, but here we are going on. Now. He knew the wrong that he did to mm. add to the aggravation and aggravated uh, uh, attitudes mm. of Anglo Saxons and, and, and what you call it? The, the, the so called powers of the world. Yes. Which is predominantly white who is trying to conquer. You understand? Mm. Every African kill out them highlighted. Every Jamaican kill out them highlighted. Why? Because they must show them, say, yo, there's a space open up for Uno now. Hey, forward. I got them, I tell them, you know. Mm. But they need to get rid of I and I and you first, you know? Mm-hmm. All right, so it's the way to go. Yeah, man. So, what about blessing strength to win it? Yeah, for real, what you know? What about strength and Yeah, man. Well, our, yeah, and our life and our soul, you know? Yeah, man. Bless I will me. give thanks for the room. Yeah, because man. remember, she, we usually see, as little youth, you know, she, we exactly. usually say, hey, when we usually watch international news at night time, you know? Always. You know, Winnie this Mandela is a little youth when it's Yes, center. man. Yeah, yeah. And she got you well. Yeah, yeah, she got yeah, you yeah. well, and she got you well. I want yeah. to hear them things that continue today, where they would them know about Marcus Clavier, they know about women, yeah. know about the Africans, and they know about the people who add to it. Yeah. And I try, try and see more, more sisters like Winnie. Yeah, and man. I started me say, yeah, give man. thanks to the whole area of them. Give thanks, man. Give thanks to you, and give thanks to the program. Big up both of you. Yeah, yeah man, you mean, man? Go generally, uh, man. Bleh, bleh. Greetings. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Yeah. I think I know the voice, yeah, but... Go yeah, on. man. Navi natural here. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> great, Navi. Binta. Ah. Yeah, man. Big arrow. Yeah, Binta Breeze. Big up, Binta Breeze. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah. here, what I'm vexed with now. Yeah. I don't like how BBC I deal with Winnie. That's what you expect, man. They, they, they I'm expect seeing anything a better. Slaughter, they, must slaughter. they they expect anything better from them? No, seriously. We never expect, you wouldn't expect anything better from them. At the worst, at the worst coverage. Yes, man. Never hear BBC get anybody we dead. Mm. Yeah, man. I damn that man. No surprise. No surprise. Mean, no, it surprised me. Me no say that kind of regular thing, mm. but the way they do it, it surprised me. Mm. Oh, you got, oh, you got discredit Winnie Mandela now. Mm. South African um, system infiltrate our football team and send a coach and some man come come join the team. Mm-hmm. And I choose the man them now. Anybody who suspect them, them lynch them and said the people them are fight against Winnie. Mm-hmm. And even at the trial, it come out say I the system them I work with. Mm-hmm. Right? And BBC. Wow, wow, wow. And BBC still a blacklist do my name. Ah, when she dead? Mm. No, man. Uh-uh. BBC feel better than that, man. Why? I, 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 I know how, be, how them work, you know. And is there anything in terms of for discredit and for put down and for do all with them, though? Them are going to do it. You realize them yeah. are do the same thing to every black leader? Exactly. That's a serious thing. Right? Them just had tear down, tear down. No black man. No good enough. Mm. Them always have to find some form of scandal. If none of them, 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 them develop one. Wow. Wow, wow. Look like the credit thing that now record. All right, Nabi, if you can call back, call back. All right, yeah, so we're still taking a call. Nabi, if you can call back, call back. But in the meantime, we're going to play the last, the, the very last media interview that the late Winnie Mandela did. The very last one, the last media interview. Earlier, we played the last, our last public appearance, our last speech. Now we're going to play the very last media interview. Mama, let's start on a lighter note. Who is Mama Winnie Mandela? We've seen the story of this wonderful woman, a leader, a mother. How would you describe yourself? 
I know, Sophie, you are unfair. <laughs> <laughs> How on earth does one just pipe oneself? No, I, I leave that uh, to, to my people to describe me. I, I've never been that vain. In fact, you know that over the years I've told you over and over again that uh, it has never been about me, the person. I've never regarded myself as an individual. I'm just part of this whole liberation machine. I've never been an individual. So I can't describe myself outside of the collective. I belong to the collective, the African National Congress um, hides itself in the collectivity of the leadership of the ANC. And uh, I, I have never been in a position to say I. I always talk about us as we, because I'm just part of the whole. Collective. Mm -hmm. And maybe in the 20 years down the line, we are marking uh, 20 years of our democracy. That mission for liberation, how would you describe it? Where are we? Is the way you dream you would be when you join this mission to liberate South Africa? Well, I would be extremely naive if I suggested to you that... Uh, South Africa of today um, is exactly what we trained off when we gave up our lives uh, for the um, liberation of our people. Uh, it is no secret uh, about the fact that we have problems. Uh, they, they are visible. Uh, we have extreme challenges uh, which we didn't have at the beginning. You cannot compare the first dispensation with what is happening uh, today. Originally, yes, we, it looked like we were going to achieve our beautiful dream. Yes, we were a miracle from the uh, violence of the past, that particular part of the transition to a new democratic South Africa was wonderful. We achieved that. But uh, in the process of doing so, um, there was naivety on our part. We were not experienced. We didn't know that uh, a political freedom was very easy um, but political freedom without economic freedom is uh, what has resulted in the challenges we face today we did not accommodate that particular problem sufficiently because of our vicious past uh, we come from a very brutal period of our history, a, a history of a country that was segregated constitutionally. And it was in black and white. Society was divided into four categories. And of course, I wouldn't bore you with what you know. And to transit from that era to, to where we are today, has been a very painful journey. We made tremendous uh, strides. We made great achievements, but at the same time, uh, the difficulties we were confronted with, particularly in relation to the youth. Um, <clears throat> as I've said before to Sophie, that uh, unemployed youth in any country is a ticking time bomb. And I think uh, the fact that uh, we, we have the parliament we have today is a consequence of, of the problems I am talking about. It was easy to hoist the flag of freedom and say we were free at last. But then uh, the economy still remained in the hands of the few. And the most difficult part has actually been transition, transformation. 
Um, we didn't realize how difficult it would be to get back our land because it was owned by the people who had oppressed us all those years and uh, we had had such a violent history that we wanted to put an end uh, to the armed struggle difficult as it was and we were not going to do uh, land grab we were going to um, see to it that we passed legislation that saw to it that uh, we got our land back uh, transitionally and amicably but uh, as you would know the willing seller, willing buyer uh, policy has not worked as much as uh, many other policies have worked we have passed a lot of legis legislation trying to transform South Africa um, amicably but uh, of course uh, the masses down there uh, do not necessarily bother to think of the fact that it cannot be done overnight and for a people who had been oppressed for so many years uh, you can't blame them for having been impatient with the leadership and you can't blame them when they wonder uh, whether this is the South Africa they fought for. And unfortunately, because of our history of our country, the pace is not as much as we would have wanted it to be, the pace of transformation. Mama, you spoke about parliament. When we look at what's happening currently in parliament, we saw the incidents, you know, when uh, during the session where there was kind of uh, some behavior that are not of, uh, that should be displayed by leaders. Looking at parliament currently, what are your comments? Well, I think uh, the leadership of our generation, although there are very few of us left now, um, we are bleeding. Uh, South Africa is hemorrhaging. Never in our dreams did we imagine that uh, Parliament uh, would be reduced to what we see today. Uh, no matter how angry, how angry we are at each other, there is no way that uh, we can disrespect each other the way we did in Parliament. And I don't think there is a single South African that is proud of what is going on in Parliament. As a matter of fact, I think uh, our generation is uh, very ashamed of how the extent to which uh, Parliament has degenerated because... Uh, it is an extreme challenge uh, to our forebears and those who lead the country today. I don't think there's anyone who applauds what happens in Parliament today. And then there's no guarantee that uh, we are going to see uh, any improvement. We, we hold our breath each time the doors of parliament open because we just never know what's going to happen what next will happen and uh, the rules of parliament are flouted uh, every day and uh, something has gone terribly wrong and uh, the, the, the senior leadership ought to introspect and I think the African National Congress needs to go back to the drawing board and we introspect and, and find out where have we gone so wrong Mama, when you look at the senior leadership we do have senior leadership though very few but at times when the leadership wants to help 
and then there's suspicion, you know, how do we deal with that? How do we ensure that we tap into this resource? I do not uh, possess a magic wand uh, which can uh, guide the country as such. I think it goes back to the collectivity of, of the leadership uh, I was talking about earlier. Surely there are still a few of us, the elders, uh, in the African National Congress, and I think it is our responsibility to come together and uh, find out where we've gone so wrong. What has happened to the leadership of the Rotulis, of the Tambos, of the Chris Hanis, uh, you, you name them, of the Sisulus, the Tumanokos, the Lillian Goyes, the Helen Josephs, where is that leadership? I, I cannot tell you uh, as I'm sitting here what has happened to us, why have we failed to, to build that kind of leadership that would have maintained the status quo of our country? Ma, um, just a few weeks ago, we heard from President Jacob Zuma talking about an ANC that is in crisis. Would you share that view? Oh, absolutely. And uh, <clears throat> I admire him for admitting that uh, uh, we have uh, a crisis in the country. And I think it is very big of him as president of the country to acknowledge that uh, the ANC is in crisis. This statement has been made before by uh, the Secretary General of, of the ANC. It's just that these statements <coughs> get made and um, they don't seem to have any impact and you don't get the analysts analyzing those people who've designated themselves, who've given themselves those positions of analyzing the political situation in the country. You don't get them assisting uh, the country in analyzing uh, those sorts of statements when a, a, a secretary general of uh, the ANC, a ruling party stands up and says the African National Congress is imploding. He has said that before. And there didn't seem to be a follow-up to that statement. And I think if there had been a follow-up, a serious follow-up to that statement, we probably wouldn't be where we are today. There's a tendency to just make those statements and... Um, they don't seem to result in us uh, going back to the drawing board each time such comments are made. But I admire the fact that uh, we have come out of a culture of being very defensive. There was a time where when you, as a matter of fact, or even when you were a, a senior member of the ANC, and you made comments of that sort outside of Lutuli House. You were regarded as a counter-revolutionary. I think we have matured a great deal for the president to actually admit that the ANC is in crisis. And I hope that attitude continues because then, in that case, we will be able to, to look at ourselves and, and uh, revisit those policies and perhaps uh, uh, just go and investigate where we went wrong. You let the struggle, but you also... Thank you very much. And so now I'd like to play this song. This song comes deep down from the bottom of my heart. This is a song that talks about the racial discrimination that is happening between blacks and whites. You see, when we read in the Bible about the creation of the earth, the Bible tells us that man was created in the image of God, but it does not tell us whether God was white, black, colored, Indian, or whatever. When I see a black man, when I see a black man, 
I see the image of God. I see a white man, I see the image of God. I see an Indian, I see the image of God. Colors and everybody, we are the images of God. God is one. That is why we are his children. We've got to be together as one. The only thing that is keeping us apart is apartheid. And so tonight we are going to bring you apartheid 69 feet down and put up a very big rock. This one now is called Together as One. Greetings. Greetings, my brother. Yeah, man. I love you, man. Could I have a request on him, man? Could I what? Could I get a request? It depends. Yeah, but I like to hear a look at you with a prisoner, you know. Oh, um... Because I remember, say, um... Even though, um, Mandela went to prison. Right. It was seen to me, like... Some things, well, um, when he got you, mm -hmm. you know, different, you come like in our prison too. Yeah, man, she then she spent, she spent, she spent a whole lot of time in her prison, you know. Yeah, she spent, nice she spent, memory, she spent more than a year um, in, in prison in 1969. She, 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 she got prison a lot of times, a lot of times, them, them lock her up, a lot of times, yeah, because, she, because she was, she was always resisting. And she never care, eh? even when them, them brigle her and them tell her them not, she not for do this, she, she always defy them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. She was a forefront of the struggle, man. Why? Well, I love how you handle the program. Yeah, well, you know, I do a thing where I give thanks, you know. Yeah, yeah but can I tell you, I love to hear the prisoner cars, but them all come all from the loot, you know. Mm-hmm. I love, I love prisoner. They are sitting and listening for it, you know. Yeah, yeah. So where you call from? Where you call from? Savlama. Where? Savlama. Oh, don't I serve? Don't I west? Yeah, man. Okay, so all the vibes don't I serve? Three to Crescent, Savlama. Okay, all the vibes. All the vibes kind of cool, right? You know. Mm. Yeah, because we're the security in that place, so yeah. it's kind of cool out. Yeah, things kind of cool. Keep it yeah, cool, man. Cool. Yeah, no, go and keep yeah, it cool. Man. Play yeah, your part. Cool, cool, yeah, yeah, go and play your part to make it stay cool. Cause it, it yeah, takes man. one. It anyway, takes, uh, it takes my one name two. is Slanga, otherwise known as Ralston. Sin. Yeah. Mm. Original love of Peter Tosh, but ah. you know, look at you, better know much different. Yeah, man. You know, Peter, so. Peter Tosh, I'm here, man. Yeah, that me I tell you, mm. the same inspiration come from. Right. Mm. So just go and dig up yourself and just drop the prisoner to me. All right, well, I'll try to find it, yeah? Yeah, man, respect. Mm -hmm. All right, give thanks. Dig up. Yeah, man, I want to say, we know a lot of people down in South Africa listening now, you know, we know the cutting edge of our, of our little following down in South Africa. I want to say, well, it's early morning now in South Africa, I should think. Yeah, man, so good morning to all the people in South Africa. Tuning into the cutting edge right now on the internet. Yeah, man. We give thanks. And we're standing in solidarity with you at this moment. Yeah, man. This is the cutting edge here on Irie FM. We go until 2 o'clock and we, you know, we're going to honor the life of the late great Winnie Mandela. Yeah, man. She joined the ancestors on Monday. Yeah, and we salute. This icon, this great warrior queen mother, yeah man, a champion of the African race, yeah man, a race that was trampled upon and ostracized and marginalized for centuries, yeah. And here we are still. They try to wipe us out, but we are still here, and we'll be here forevermore, and we'll reclaim back our rightful place. As masters of civilization. Greetings. Yeah, greetings. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm an Indus, Winnie Mandela, and Mr. Mandela. Yes, man. Because I am an African. See him so? Yeah. Yeah, man. All right. You know, me can I look panto. Hmm. This is for Mr. Mandela pathway. Yeah, man. A whole packing guy around, you know. Well, things that are going wrong for me even before him to drop out, you know, before, before him even transcend. 
Yeah, but they make them kind of make it worse. Our, our leaders, them where, where I run our country mm. and, and the other country, them because right now, we can't buy for Jamaica and say it now, nah, it now nah really run right. And the people, them, I mash up the country to them to stop it because look here, mm. black people are under oppression from a long time, you know. True. And, and we have to build our army because they're going to be a war. Just like the, the, the Australian people, and the racist for a long time, you know. Mm. You hear what going on in Australia today, though? No. You know, so the Commonwealth game started today, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you follow sports? Part, you follow sports? Part, I mean, you, you mentioned. Yeah. yeah, man. If you follow sports, the Commonwealth game started, but the original, um, a, a set of the, a group, I represent the original Aborigines, was a part demonstrating and telling the world that in their own country, of which they are the original inhabitants, yes. they are still being marginalized and ostracized by the white yeah. people on there, you know? Yeah, the man, they don't like black people. They oppress black people, and they go going like mm. them nice. Mm. They're not nice. Mm. And they are black people, they oppressed in Australia from a long time, from slavery days until now. No, man. So, watch out. England and the whole of them have to come together now and pay for the slavery them do to we. Because me now, me now go live and die and, and we don't get pay for the slavery them do the brutal. No man, rep- repatriation is a must, you know. Yeah, yeah, the atrocity uh, where them mm. commit for other people. Repatriation know. is a must, man. Up, you know. It's a must. Rep- uh, reparation is a must. Reparation is a must. Why the BBC if you come come interview some people in a Jamaica too. See them like how them are trying to don't play Miss Winnie man, Mandela. Mm-hmm. Then to come at Jamaica come interview some of the slave picnic them were left on here, where, where England are run left. Mm-hmm. That them to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah man. All right, yes sir. All right, give thanks. Yeah, do a good work. All right, bless up yourself. Don't know. Yeah. Distance. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. 20 past 1 o'clock now, you know. Still the cutting edge here on IRFM. And it's a pleasure, of course, as I say, a privilege to be sitting in here in this chair to represent in this program talking about some African consciousness, you know. Black consciousness. Greetings. Yeah, greetings. Yes. My condolences and to Winnie Mandela. Yeah. Uh, and no, sir, the struggle we should carry on. Mm-hmm. We appreciate it. Sure. And we see, when we see black people, mm-hmm. do not love themselves. Yeah, yeah. Now their own race. Yeah, man. Then because of fear that chain within all mine. Cause heritage unto life worth and the true vision bring changes. So the changes begin with the, with oneself. Yeah, man. Start First. from within. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So what is the problem? The heritage will bring fear now. It come from within the mind. Mm-hmm. So you remember, say the change my mind. You go. You're going to put chain on my feet. You're going to whip me. You're going to do all these things to me. Mm. That is what our race undergoing now and still is mm. from a decade at a time. Mm-hmm. But on the one way to liberate the true self is within your physical to your spiritual self. That is the eternal life itself. You have to know what life really worth to live in for. So you have to identify that spiritual connection to life. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you, say, I couldn't see the Almighty, that is Rastafari, Ayla Selassie, the Almighty, Yahweh, Jehovah, Savior, Allah, Jesus, Jesus, are the same source. But what we feel so to do? We don't know that identity. Look around us, within us, here, there, and everywhere. Mm. That is the mental slavery where our mind trap into. Yeah, man. So for free up that, you have to go be truthful unto your natural self. That is life. Sure. So where it is at this moment here in our studio, 
and when you look around you know go for you and me alone but it go for the universal life yeah man everything you're within the darkness that is light so you'll bring back the reflection of yourself that is a shadow and the shadow is the darkness so if there is no light where you get darkness because darkness is a representative of its identity all is the darkness all is the source of life you see when you know what the spiritual connection with the physical is and you know say you are the creator within yourself that is life you're gonna learn to live care and share for life but if you lose that connection within that spiritual realms within our one what ourselves at this moment at this time we are twice defeated that is the black race mm. yeah so forget yourself and track now we have to go from that essence a life within the formation at the beginning of its creation to take yourself from this so and to reach that stage there you have to be truthful unto your natural self that is life that is a source so i couldn't tell you I couldn't see the Almighty that is right in front of you. Because His presence is everywhere it can be seen. So if you go up to the sky, you still see it. If you travel to the bottom of the ocean, you still see it. If you travel to the universe, the darkness is nothing escaped the darkness. The darkness is the all-powerful life. So, to Rome, that is the European, caught us within this system automatically, what drop and trap the mindset so if the truth is in front of you the truth will set you free but is all you acknowledge it or you're aware of it or you look into it or you be truthful to life so you have the same power like me me not have no more power than nobody else but me what me do me just acknowledge the truth for what the truth is all right sir so the power flow through you through me through life and then we begin to heal back our black nation. That is only one way to life. You know, sir, I was living in love and harmony and still is living in love and harmony, but it's only the creation, fight and war amongst each other. The, the source of life wants to tap in to that connection you, are, you will process that love, caring, sharing to life. But with this in connection from that love, from that source, from that life, I will take on many different things ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And you know, say, if you don't connect to your spiritual realms, you could uh, do anything where you want. And all these things you had to do. You still have to come back to the foundation of the root of life. All right, Bridget. Where you call from? Eh? Where you call from? Where me call from? Yeah. Well, the country, you know. Yeah, man. Which part? Which part of the country? Which? Oh, um, Portland, you know. Okay. All right. Give thanks, you know. Yeah. Give so, thanks. you see, you have the power, just like me, to share and care mm. to the truth. So, the truth is in front of you. It's how you acknowledge the truth. To be aware of the truth. So, me couldn't tell you, I couldn't say, the most I, what you're speaking is about. You might look on you, you look on him, but one physical and one spiritual. So, your spiritual self is the image and your reflection of yourself that is a shadow, that is a darkness, that is everywhere. All right, sir. Give time, right. sir. Bless, 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 bless. Yeah, greetings. Hello? Yeah, man, greetings. Yeah, man. East man, I call in, man. East man. Which it's part of East? To win, you know? Which part of East? This, man? Saint Thomas. Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Big up Saint Thomas. A favorite place that you know. Yeah. Hmm. What are going on? Talk to me. Yeah, we just a salute to Winnie Mandela, you know. Just of that course. Person, yeah, you know? man. That way I say to you know. That way I say Winnie Mandela. Winnie Mandela. We know, you know. Yeah. Yeah, man. We, we, our generation, of Winnie Mandela. We this we only hear say so Mandela. Man, yeah. they, they are jail. We never know yeah. where you go, but with a year, same yeah, day, but I win it. Did I lead the struggle for we? Yeah, yeah man. We yeah. are the real warriors. Yeah, yeah man. Mm. We only throw up on the back of the We know this, so we just have to say salute. Salute, man. Of course, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I want to big up a brother down in a Falmouth, the Shaka. 
Ah. Big up, brother, them up in a blue mountain peak. Mm. Mosiah, Kali, and I say salute. Seen. Win the man. Yeah, man. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, man. Give thanks. Bless, 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 bless. Three yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, Bridget. Yeah. Yeah, my little contribution. Um, yeah, man. Great condolence to Winnie Mandela. She was a real warrior. Seen? So we set up. Yeah, man. And Mandela was a traitor. She was a real warrior. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people never approve of Mandela. But him do him thing still, and him gone. And you know, no one really to talk to. Yeah, well, any that yeah. pass and gone. But a winnie we are celebrating now. Winnie we are celebrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, man. Can I do one big up? Hmm? Can I do one big up? Um, go on up. We want to yeah, big up um, Sharon Ling mm-hmm. in London. London, okay. Yeah, and more than love to keep in touch with me. So let me number 778 3034. Mm-hmm. And you can call back to the station. Yeah, man, you can do that. 778 3034. Sharon Ling, link up. Yeah. Mm. All right. Yeah, man. Black survivors. We are the black survivors. How long must the people be that human sacrifice? Stand up. Defend your rights. Up, up, mighty race. You can accomplish what you will. Stand up. Defend your rights. In one day, they destroyed what took a thousand to build. Stand up. Defend your rights. They may conquer other lands, but they never kill the will. Stand up. Defend your rights. Liberty and democracy are truly expensive. Can even cost one's life. And those who stand for nothing fall for any little thing. Father, heal the blinded eyes. The immortal advantage taken of the people. The heavens are the cries. Savior, our calamities are so great. Patiently the humble wait. To attain freedom, why must there be shedding of blood? Is there no real love? Are they still holding a grudge? Penal institution to keep us down. Massive destruction of other nations. Less investment in education. Where do we went wrong? Stand up, defend your rights. Nation going to war against each other, but you are still my brother regardless of color. We demand the rights to be heard, the rights to be seen, the rights to question information. Can't you see the federal manipulation? Millions dying of starvation as the superpower plants another pile of mob invasion. <laughs> Who has the power to veto? Stand up and say no. Defend your rights. You have already paid the price and been the sacrifice. No more shedding of blood. No more loss of lives. Remove the veil from your eyes. Yeah, man, that was Bujo Bantan chanting some poetry, you know. So from Bujo Bantan, we go to the legendary one himself, Alton Ellis. The cutting edge here on IRA FM in the home stretch of the program this morning. Greetings. Greetings. Greetings, Virgin. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm just a call to remind you about the prisoner. Yeah, man, I'm not seated to know. I'm not seated to know. Yeah, yeah but I hope you find it. Anything you can find it, you can play even the African Peter Touch, you know. Mm, yeah, man. So, they are sitting as a still, you know. All right, sir. Yeah, man, let's go and big up yourself. Yeah, man. Bless. Respect. Bless, bless. Greetings. Hello. Raja. Yes. Yeah, big up yourself. Yeah, man, see ya. The, the, the children, they want to ask you for a slave with me, you hear? From Lucky Rube? Yeah. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. The children, they want to tell you to look for him, slave. Yeah, man, but me I look for you, but I'm not seated. yet. Oh, you know, uh, you can't play, you can't play on, on St. Thomas Artist tune for me. No, uh, it's not a tune, it's not a play tune program, this you know, you're not supposed to know that, man. All right. Alright. Slave with two names still. Play anything from Lucky Dube. Yeah, man. we we'll just play my while I go to. Alright. Alright. Bless. Yeah. Greetings. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Good night. Yeah. Roger. Yeah. Roger. Yes. Yeah, man. Hello? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hearing you. Yeah, yeah man. I'm on Dingo. May I beg you to play two tunes for me. Equal rights by the Eptones. That's studio one tune that. Equal rights by the Eptones. And Peter Tosh, equal rights. All right, I'll we'll see if we can find it. I'll we'll see if we can yeah, find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. It tones equal rights. Mm. That's a studio mm. one. Mm. And Peter Tosh, my favorite wheeler, equal rights. All right, sir. Same type, but two different tunes. See, mm. it tones 
equal rights. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I, don't know know if, I don't know if you can make it. I don't know if you can make it for the rest of the program, but we, we'll right. see. Yeah, if I even later then. Yeah. Monday, step in, day, step in. Yeah, step in, step in, step in. Yeah, little Low more. Grata. All yeah. right. Greetings. Yes, teacher. Blessed. Blessed. Yeah, you know, so now bless up. Winnie, the mother. Yeah, see? yeah, man. Yeah, that's where I that's where I see them visions straight, you know, like me, I talk to us straight, you know. Yeah. Yeah, my, I uh, yeah, me no, no, I rest the city, you, you know, Tivoli and Portland, you, they may be good straight. Yes, man. Yeah, man, I dress us Christ, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, the, yeah, the vision, my, my, my vision for the nation, but the government, they might try to go around me. Okay. Yeah, man, I have all the work, I have all the work for the world, the war of them, and the inner city to them to start the crime, but, and so they might go around the thing. Oh, they might go around the thing. Yeah, man, but to me, I said, let's big up with you again, you see? Yes, man. Yeah, man, I'm one love, and one love for the nation. Yes, man. Yeah. man. Bless. Greetings. Yeah, blessed, my general. Blessed, my general. Yeah, my family, boy. You don't know if you bless up with a man that I hear that. Yes, man. Yes, man. Uh, the liquor with me, you know, about that, you know. Mm. A good struggle, she struggle. Yes, man. The queen, of the, the, she was the mother of the struggle. Yeah, man. Okay. Mm. Me hear one of our singer them. Remember who was singing, singer with a man that I met? I said, if I was around to me. You mean and Carleen Davis? Yeah, Winnie man, Mandela. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah man. man. Then yeah. Winnie, Winnie not knowledge the other song that Kira, man. Kira, true. Let me not tell her, yeah, man. man. She had knowledge when she came to Jamaica, you know. Yeah, man. For yeah. real, man. Yeah. Because you know we Jamaican ever support. True. Yeah, man. They In fact, Jamaica, Jamaica was the first country who start, who, 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 who instigated sanctions against South Africa, you know, the apartheid era, you know. Yeah, man. For nah, man, real, man. Now, man, man, let them. Yeah. Yeah, man. For mm. real, man. Trust me. Mm. See, that we for no say. Japan, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we, we yeah, and everybody take our life, you know? Yeah, man. Mm. God knows, I just want to bless you for our two daughters. Them up, right? Yeah, two daughters, right. Yeah, man. We just want to bless them up, sir, because trust me, general. Mm-hmm. Good woman, you know? True, man. Yeah, man, my car from in a turn drive, Amber Clean, you know? Ah, uh, where? Which part? Turn drive. Turn drive. Amber Clean. Yeah, that's what? Doing the park side, sir? No, Mullins in the half a tree. Oh, man. oh, oh, I'm Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, I know how it is. I'm Brooklyn turn, yeah, man. I want to link, man. Yeah, man, I know how it is, man. Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, man, man. Trust me, General. Mm. Oh, I'm big up some of my friends, them here, especially yeah. the Bubble Park from Papa Bubble Hill. Yeah. You know a spirit? Spirit, yeah. spirit. Yeah. Oh, you know. You come from on the Am Brooklyn side. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, See. man. Seen. Oh, we general like, man. Yeah, man, yeah. general. Yeah. Yeah, man, they're cool, man. Yeah, yeah they're man. They might have made nothing to worry them. Well, yeah. Yeah. Right, so the spirit could all listen. Big up yourself, spirit, if you all listen. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. No, I'm good all that sleep, I know. Mm. See, but we know him from letting him up still, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm having a virgin up at Glenga after a thunder, up at Thunder Court. Named Thunder. Mm-hmm. I'm building my son, Marl and Samuel Father. Yeah. Big up yourself, boy, it's tough, because I know you are listening. The man is not... Yeah, man, the man is not the fire, man. I know, man. Oh, I plug him, plug out right there, you know. Yes, man. I know, man. Give him up, give him up. Yo, <laughs> boy, big him up for me, man. Yeah, man. All of his friends, I'm in the handbook here, and turn, drive. Mm-hmm. You hear that? Yeah, man. Because uh, my ex, ex, him ever said, I'm not big him up, and I'm driving him taxi. Mm. When I big him up, and right now, I just, See this for my girl, no man. Boy, I'm not telling a lie, man. With the Mandela. Mm. She just come like a sister to be here, that. Yeah, man, a life, man. Yeah, you know? Yeah, man. Mm. The vibe, no, it's a nice, but. Mm. Boy. Struggle star. Yeah. Struggle, struggle. I mean, I listen to the last. The last. I like a couple things the way you do the what there. The last. The what? Public, the last public appearance that she made. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two yeah. of them, you know, we did the la- the, our last interview, our last media interview, yeah, our man. last public I appearance. Listen, man. Yeah, I listen man. I listen until I'm done, my general, and I love that, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not have that ready, you know? Yes, man. Yeah, man. Okay, a good thing, that, man. Yes, man. Me. Yes, man. I'm big up my friend, him, now, I'm all loving you. Mm. I'm a back road and Robert, too. Because them people, they ever listen to me, you know? Because yeah. listen to me, you know? Is that money? I regular I'm gonna go find this thing, you know. Seen. But I pop my I saw that my pack up in a bed phone on like that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that my lack of my lack of. Seen, seen, seen. Alright, sir. 
Oh, okay, get up yourself. Bless up yourself, too, man. Yeah, All right. that. yeah man. Bless, yeah? yeah? Man. Cool. Ah. Mm. A book of rules as we close out the cutting edge tonight. You know, I want to give thanks to everyone who make it possible. I want to thank Shamaro, the producer, who was here for a while. Of course, you know, we featured in depth, you know, the life and the works of the great, late Winnie Mandela. Seeing? Yeah, man, you know, she joined the ancestors on Monday gone. You know, so we salute and we honor and we pay homage to the life of this great queen mother warrior. You know, the mother of the apartheid struggle. Of course, you know, I start in for Musa tonight and I will be doing the same on the stepping razor in the daytime, a little later on, you know. You know, it's a cut and go program that stepping razor. So, you know, so we'll be here. You know, says so the man Matrix coming in right now, you know, he don't know. <laughs> Boy, I, I don't want to say, I don't want, I don't want to say, I'm going to turn off my radio. I want, because if I don't turn off my radio, you know, man, I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going, <laughs> if I don't turn, <laughs> and I don't want to turn it off either, you know. I because it's brilliant, when this brother start playing, the man, the man is all, um, heard quaking at the man in our tune, you know, man. But anyway, big of ourselves still Matrix. Yeah, yeah in general, you don't know. So, all right then, people. So